<clears throat> you know, with me, it's never like playing favorites. It's never gonna be like, oh, I just like this person and don't like this person permanently. No, all I'm responding to is if you're giving to me, and if you're giving to me, I'm gonna give it back. But if not, I'm not giving it to your faves. So you're just gonna have to go to one of them channels that appease people. There are plenty of them. What's good, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me on the channel. My name is Brendan, AKA 20 Days of June. And if you click this video, you know why you're here. Probably because of either Tinashe or Cardi and Lizzo. And if you are, you're in luck because we're talking about both. We have one thing I wanna get into real quick before that, and then we're gonna get into both of these projects. So if you're ready, let's go. What I wanna get into before we discuss Cardi and Lizzo was one song that dropped last week that kind of threw a monkey wrench in my plans because I had other music to listen to, Victoria Monet and you. You all right, Victoria Monet dropped her single Coasted. Now, if you don't know who Victoria Monet is, she works closely with Ariana Grande and she makes very beautiful, divine feminine, very black sexual songs, but she has like a thousand different metaphors for sex without ever saying it raunchily. Not that raunchy shit is not cool because we love raunch, but I am saying that the way Victoria Monet does it does make it more artistic and less rapish, which in R&B you do have to be a little bit more creative sometimes. Although Ari Lennox and Jasmine Sullivan did just say, I wanna sit on it and it worked. But I like the way Victoria Monet does it. Last year she dropped her project called Jaguar, Listen, if you like just music that just feels black, Victoria Monet is for you, okay? It just feels like it's the essence of divine black feminine. It To me, dive, uh, we might be falling in love, go there with you? Baby, go there with, the guitars on go there with you. Victoria Monet just knows music. It's like she oozes this, this culture. And that's why I just love her. Coasting, it's giving Mary J. Blige all night. It gives me Tell Me Groove Theory. All the songs that I grew up on, uh, Hold On and Vogue. I'm just like, what is going on? Why are you chat? Why are you pulling this out of me, this 90s-ness? That's, that's where I feel like Victoria Monet's soul really comes from, is back when Tony Braxton was out, In Vogue was out, TLC was out, Aaliyah. It gives me all that. It gives me all of just all that glory, and I can't wait to see her collaborate further. Who would I want to see Victoria Monet really collaborate with? I said on my Patreon that I really want to see her work with Diddy. I feel like they could work well together. More than anything, if I had to pick an artist off the top of my head that I really want to see Victoria Monet work with, I would say Tiana Taylor. I feel like they both come from that same school of just, ooh, like just flavor. And I love it. So please go listen to Coast In because that's probably why this Tanache review is taking a long time is because I spent too much time listening to Coast In and they're just two different flavors. Okay, but I did get into Tanache, but Victoria, this is your fault and I love you. Please put out more, whatever you want. Support independent artists, please, straight up. Next, let's get into Cardi and Lizzo because Tinashe stands, these notes are yours, but I'm gonna leave them on top of here because they've been here while I was filming this video and I meant to move them. So now they're a part of the set, great. Lizzo and Cardi dropped their collaboration rumors. And okay, let me start off with my original Lizzo take. My original Lizzo take was they were trying to brand Lizzo as a rapper because rap is an easy field to Enter now, it's a lick, it's pop. And that's fine, but Lizzo's not a rapper. When I'm saying rappers, I'm thinking City Girls, I'm thinking Cardi B, I'm thinking Nicki Minaj, I'm thinking sometimes Doja Cat. Not all the time, no, sometimes. sometimes. That, that means, means some sometimes. Times. Lotto, Flo Millie, Dream Doll, Coily Ray. that's rap. Lizzo's not rap. Lizzo does another thing. And to me, Lizzo represented the machine because Truth Hurts and Good As Hell, those were songs that were out for years. They were the love and hip hop finale songs for years before last year, two years ago, they decided to act like they were brand new. They were not new songs. The machine just picked Lizzo. Duh. And I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I don't know that. That's why I didn't like Lizzo because the come up was inauthentic. But now she's back with newer music and to me, this is Lizzo's first real pass at it. And I gave it a fair shot. I watched the video. And I live. Let me tell you why I live. First of all, the video is expensive. That's come to become, I think she signed to Atlantic. That's come to become a standard for Atlantic artists is to have expensive shit, period. And I'm not mad at that because I want my videos expensive. If you're gonna do a green screen, it better be huge. You know what I'm saying? It better be the size of the room. And I live the way they do those green screens now. But the Hercules, Lizzo looks like a muse. Our favorite muse is the thick one, first of all. So Lizzo's giving muse. I love the dancers. It's the perfect rollout. The rollouts are always perfect nowadays though, aren't they? Mm. Here's my thing. The song itself to me is a no. I only liked it because I watched it with the video. But if I wasn't listening to it with the video, what I would have probably felt about it was it was very commercial, which 
yeah, it's commercial, but it's giving very Target back to school commercial. It's giving very get connected for free with education connection. It's like, eh, not for me. I'm good. She's rapping, but it's not rap. Okay, if, if I'm considering this to be any form of rap, I would give it pop rap. Pop rap that used to be reserved for girls like Fergie and Gwen Stefani. But now we have Lizzo and I'm not mad at it. I wanna see black people take this over the commercial space. It's ours. And I love that a black person is at the head of that. I don't, you know what I mean? Fergie has seen generational wealth from her style of rapping for the black eyed peas in solo that a lot of girls that rapped for hip hop never got still have to work have day jobs now i want to see more black girls more black people be able to capitalize off of that space because rap is our genre the same way pop is our genre so that's fine i love seeing lizzo in this space it makes sense another thing whenever cardi pops out it's an event i've been known to say that but it's real cardi b is expensive and a lot of people are so attached to the other version of cardi that they may have known but that's long gone and that's long past. And she still is referencing it in the music, but she's expensive, okay? Every time she pops out, the video is expensive. You're not inviting her somewhere where you have a 36 cent budget. Obviously, there's a Cardi standard that's being created here that if you don't like it, you're probably just a hater and you have to really get over it. It's always gonna be expensive, whether you feel that way about the music or not. But if you're understanding the pop space, whenever you see Cardi, is gonna be like that. And that's pretty fire. But overall from Lizzo, it's giving more Gwen Stefani than it is Lil' Kim, more holla back girl than it is queen bitch. You know what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with that, but let's make a distinction here when we're talking about rappers, cause Lizzo's not a rapper. Cardi, perfect pop crossover. Song concept, perfect pop crossover. You can't lose. You're not gonna lose, are you? And long past the song, cause we're already with Cardi collabs not talking about Wild Side anymore, she just gonna keep rolling through them. My favorite thing about the Lizzo thing, and I said this on my Patreon about Lil Nas X is, this is for children, not children, but kids. Pop is meant to be enjoyable for all age groups, and it is to market to kids. And when I was a kid, I grew up the fat kid, straight up. I'm not gonna sit here and act like, oh, look at that. No, I grew up the fat kid, and there was nobody to look at. Everybody that was a fat man or fat in media, it was a laughing stock of a joke. If you were fat in a show or even in wrestling, if you were fat, it was a joke. There were no fat people in Dragon Ball Z besides like Majin Buu. All right, he was cool. And then Mr. Popo, but he was blackface. Not cool, you know what I mean? Representation in that regard is gonna matter because I know there's gonna be a little kid who needs to see that, that needs to see themselves in somebody. And I didn't have that. And I know how important that possibly could be. Do I want that for big men? Yes. And I said the same thing about Lil Nas X for young black gay men. They probably grew up without that representation or with it not being in the forefront. And now they get to feel seen in the pop space. And that's important. That's what this is about for me. It's not always about music. I get it. The music is the music. But I grew up already in a world that didn't have that. I feel like I want a better world for kids for them to feel represented and to see Lizzo next to Cardi and just to see beauty in all spans. It does make a difference in the world and you can't deny that. So congratulations to both of them. They nailed it, they did a good job. And I won't say that Lizzo and I are like friends, but I will call us acquaintances right now, Lizzo. I enjoyed it, I enjoy what you're doing, and I enjoy seeing you operate, and I wanna see what things look like without whatever happened last time, cause that was garbage, those songs were old, and the machine's gonna machine for you now, but, the video's good. That's what pop is about now. Fire videos. All right, Tanache Stans, your moment has come so you can finally get your foot off my neck. Let's talk about your girl. Let's talk about 333. Because, okay, 333 took a second for me to ingest and I think that's okay. I think that one listen reviews are what's fucking shit up right now anyway. I think that people need to really calm down with that and take a second to ingest music. And I know that's never gonna happen because the algorithm forces people to get stuff out fast. But for me personally, I wanna know what I'm talking about before I start talking. Make sense? So I wasn't gonna come in here and do the girl greasy or not be able to give the review that I wanted to give. Now I can give it. My favorite thing about 333 is the same thing that was my favorite thing about Bouncing is that somehow the vocals are EQ'd to sound like she recorded it in a spaceship. And with the whole concept being 333, I can see the future, synchronicities, I love the way that the album kind of sounds like that. My first take that I wrote was, if the last album was songs for you, this album is songs for me. You know, I feel like Tinashe wrote this as like, this is songs for herself. 
And I love that because these are the type of songs that Tinashe stands have always wanted. I love to see Tinashe push R&B into her direction. There is now a wave where R&B is going to split up in plenty of different directions to represent black people in our entirety. And what Tinashe did was combine all the things that we've always loved about Tinashe, which is her affinity for electronic music, for futuristic sounds, for kick hop, for, for all those different forms, for house, which is a black form of music, all these things that have always been a part of Tinashe that maybe the pop space was telling her, no, you're pretty and be pretty and make pretty pop music. And Tinashe has always been like, I'm an artist, let me be an artist. And to me, it all came together in this album in a way that's just made me so proud. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the tracks that I wrote down. I You saw my notes, let's just go through it. We got I Can See The Future. I talked about that, love the song. I didn't realize it was written by Derek Milano. Derek Milano was behind a lot of shit. Next song I wanna talk about is X featuring Jeremiah because Hitmaker and Jeremiah are gonna make their way onto any project. I'm just glad we kept them there. Sometimes I feel a way about the Hitmaker machine, but this one, I wish I didn't feel this way about it, but I do feel like the song's a little bit of a ripoff and that has nothing to do with Tinashe because the original guy that I know that's making these form of like video gamey beats is a guy called Jetson, Jetson Made. He's done a song called At Me by Playboy Cardi. He did a song called Light Skin Shit by Baby, And they're all these 90s video gamey sounds, which of course Hitmaker has now co-opted for Tinashe. Do I love it? Absolutely. Is it futuristic? Absolutely. Is it one of my favorite songs on the album? It was the easiest song on the album to ingest from what I already know, but because my brain has a point of reference for it. But I did not write fave next to it because it's easily ingestible. So I love the song, but that was an easy pick for me. So I'm moving on. The Shy Guy into Bouncing Transition, Chef's Kiss, perfect night drive music. It makes your car sound like a spaceship. It's something about the way that the song just seems to circle around you. The, the sound of it kind of just like orbits around you. It's nuts. Then we've got Unconditional, which I really love because it's got that kick hop kind of sound that I'm very much a fan of. There's a song that Brie Runway has with Amorphous called It's a Vibe. And then probably most notably, the song that's taken in this kick hoppy sound is Dua Lipa, One Kiss. My favorite thing about this song is the message. It's about the price of unconditional love. It's that loving someone unconditionally is not exactly fun. That means you take a lot on the chest with that. Loving somebody unconditionally. You wear their mistakes. You wear the way that they might not love you the same. It's a beautiful song. I love the song, but still not one of my favorites. And I, it's crazy because at the time I was like, this is the one. I love this one. And then it's like, nope. Then there's Angels featuring Cash Page. Now Cash Page has been hitting a little bit too hard for me. Like every time I see featuring Cash Page, it's a bop. So now I need you guys to put me on some more Cash Page because I feel like I'm behind because I need to pay homage. I'm a stan low key. She has a song with Ray Black called M.I.A. And I just, I love everything that she does and I don't know enough and I need to know more. So if you're into Cash Page, you let me know. But the song is good and it's slow nashe. Then there's 333. All I wrote down was that it was a vibe, which means we're moving on. And then there's Undo, which is the next single. Undo is two songs in one, which I love. You think you're getting into one experience because Tanache, her melodies are so good. And then all of a sudden, we can't, dun, 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 and it just takes it to like that world music, that festival music, that vibe. It's both worlds of Tanache combined into one. I wish the girl who was forced to put out Flame could hear Undo because then she would be like, exactly, that's what I meant. I didn't mean that, I meant this, you know what I mean? She should be so proud of that. Okay, here comes the first song that I wrote Fave about, Let Me Down Slowly. It's something about the melody, it's something about the tone, it's something about the desperation in the voice, the honesty, I was listening to it like, am I crying? What is this? It, this was a song where I was like, oh, 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 favorite, 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 favorite. But I like sad music, cause, I don't know, I'd be sad. And the next song that I wrote Fave about is The Chase. Yes, The Chase. You know, sad Nashe, I love sad Nashe, but every now and then Tanashe gotta remind you that she is an Aquarius, and Aquariuses don't really be caring about shit. And Tanashe, The Chase is all about the fact like, oh, I have self-worth, baby. I have that, that's in me. And if you think I'm about to chase you, wasting time doing that, no, 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 no. And also, the black alternative wave, ooh. I don't have time today. I really wanna talk about the Willow album, but let me tell you something. Those of us who liked a little bit of Green Day, a little bit of Fall Out Boy, a little bit of All American Rejects, our time is now. Rise, a little bit of Weezer, our time is coming back, boy. Ooh, I made up my mind. I ain't gotta chase nobody. Next, I've come to apologize and make amends. In context of the album, I love Pasadena. 
and I don't get it. I don't know why. I, I as a single, I think the first single Pasadena didn't represent maybe even as well as Bouncing did. It was kind of I didn't get why we were there, but in context of the album, I get it. When Pasadena came on, it's like it broke up the way it slowed down and then it came up, which is another point about this album is that it's so brilliantly sequenced. Like everything is in a perfect spot, everything fits. I'm sure there are songs that Tanasha recorded from this album that she probably wanted on the album, but they didn't fit. I feel like sequencing was intentional here. And I, I really appreciate that. There's not too much and there's not too little. There's enough of a taste of everything Tanache does in here. And the next song that I wrote Fave about is Bouncing Part Two. Let me read exactly what I wrote. Come on, Tanache, devour me, you little wood nymph in a squirrel wig. You know you eating this shit up. Tanache will get away from that mic and belt a note. It's giving ecstasy. And that's what I mean. One thing Tanache will do is back away from that mic and stand in the corner of the room and just go, that reverb be reverbing and let me tell you something at some point in time the ecstasy that was needed for this slow down this chopped and screw this run it back on a song that is already the girl tinashe man like at that point in time i was like you know you snapping you know you're doing it you you're giving purple drink Woo! houston texas you giving Slim thug. I can't. By the time we got to bouncing part two it's like you knew that shit was ill and you just wanted to run it back you wanted to run it back. You needed to run it back. That has got to be my favorite, man. I, I love that chopped and screw moment from Tanache. And then the final song is It's a Rap, which is the perfect way to wrap the album up. It's a Rap is just classic Tanache, which is the perfect way to end an album that was a trip around her galaxy. And in conclusion, how I feel about 333 is that it just very much so is the future. This is what it's about. She married so many different genres with R&B Nashe. I felt like the other genres had to come into R&B Nashe's world in this album, rather than maybe what was expected of her before, which was to cram how she feels into these boxes. The boxes now had to fit into Nashe's galaxy and they had to keep up. And this is probably gonna go down if you're a fan of Tanache, if you're a real fan of Tanache, this might be your favorite. As far as like official albums, I feel like it, every artist says, oh, well, this is my favorite album. That the, I feel like this might be Tanache's most authentic album to date. Is it better than Songs For You? I don't know, because Songs For You was like such a moment loving Tanache and seeing her get those songs like Hopscotch, like Save Room For Us, like Life's Too Short. It was just the first taste of Tanache's freedom. And it just means so much to me that I don't know if I'm ready to compare the two. But are they both my children? Yes. When I first listened to 333, I was like, oh, this ain't Songs For You. but. As I continued to listen to it, I said, it's not songs for me. It's songs for her. It's songs for us. It's growing and Tanache is growing. And this is just a beautiful effort. It's just not really much else I have to say. When you go through an album and you add more than three tracks to a playlist, then you're successful. And Tanache has succeeded to me. And I come to every project with an ear like, if you flop, I'm gonna have to say that. And I don't think I ever have to worry about that with Tanache. So congratulations to Tanache and congratulations to Tanache Stance because this has been a long time coming for you. To feel like Tanache's got her feet on the ground and to feel like she can do as she pleases and to have her look happy. You know, I, so many artists we see that have to play by the label rules or play by this rule and that rule and they don't look happy. They don't look like they're living. They don't look like they love what they do. And this album feels like it comes from Tanache's heart center. And that's what I love about artistry and the artists that I love more than anything, is feeling the authenticity in it. And if you've witnessed Tanache's process of trying to stay true in an industry that's wanted her to be what they want her to be, this album is about her seeing the future and knowing that she was ahead of her time when she started this shit. Long ahead of her time. She can see the future because she is the future. So many young artists will see what Tanache is doing and we will see Tanache be an influence to so many in the future by what she's doing right now. So congratulations to Nashe on another great project. And whenever you wanna put out another one, I'll be ready. But until then, I'll be listening to this one. I love it. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of whatever this was. It's not really a think tank because I just wanted to talk about some music, but it's all positivity, man. I think we're forming a better world of both commercial projects like Lizzo and then independent efforts like Tanache and like Victoria Monet. The spectrum 
is representing us all. And if you can find an artist that represents you, you don't necessarily have to hate an artist that doesn't. Find who represents you. There are plenty of them out there who are doing plenty of things. Representation does matter, but a lot is being represented. But do make sure you're supporting your indie artists because Cardi and Lizzo are gonna get paid because the machine is gonna make sure that happens regardless, okay? So Victoria Monet and Tanache deserve your support, your buys, and your streams. Don't stream it, buy it. Stream Lizzo though. Whatever. Anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget, there's no such thing as good or bad people, just complicated stories. Catch you next time. Sorry, there was a problem with I ain't talking to you, girl.